Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Sophie Erber. Today, the Justice Department announced a federal investigation into the Minneapolis Police Department. Meanwhile, Congress facing calls now to restart talks on police reform. KCAU 9 Washington correspondent Trevor Shirley reports now in our top story at 5. Earlier today, Attorney General Merrick Garland announced the Justice Department would be opening an inquiry into the practices of the Minneapolis Police Department. And this is something totally separate from whatever Congress wants to do on its own, but it still fits with the overall goals of the Biden administration as it relates to comprehensive police reform. Garland says the Justice Department will take a deep look into the practices and policies of the Minneapolis Police Department. He says, though, this is separate from the investigation the department already has opened on George Floyd's death. The Attorney General also says the focus will be on whether the policies and practices of the Minneapolis Police Department violate the Constitution. If the Justice Department concludes that there is reasonable cause to believe there is a pattern or practice of unconstitutional or unlawful policing, we will issue a public report of our conclusions. In Congress, the House has already passed several police reform bills, including the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. But so far, none of those have gone anywhere in the Senate. Democrats in Congress want an outright ban on the use of chokeholds and no-knock warrants, while Republicans are wanting things like increased disclosure for use of force incidents. We must remain diligent in our efforts to bring meaningful change to police departments across the country to reform practices and training, and the legal protections that grant too great a shield to police officers guilty of misconduct. And qualified immunity continues to be a stumbling block on Capitol Hill. It's a legal doctrine that essentially shields police officers from facing lawsuits. Democrats want to see it go, but Republicans say it's something they want to fight to keep. Reporting in Washington, I'm Trevor Shirley. The suspect in the death of an Iowa State Trooper is now in jail after being released from the hospital. This is 41-year-old Michael Lang of Grundy Center. He's charged with first-degree murder in the shooting death of Sergeant Jim Smith. Police say the shooting happened while Smith was attempting to arrest Lang, who barricaded himself inside his home. Lang is being held on a $3 million bond. A verdict has been reached for two Denison City employees who sued the former mayor and also a city council member. A jury ruled in favor on Tuesday of this week of Denison City Clerk Lisa Koch and City Manager Terrence Crawford. This in the case awarding a total of $376,500 in damages. Those two were placed on administrative leave back in December of 2018 and then investigated. This was after the former mayor, Jared Boehmer, and a city council member took issue with some spending and use of vacation days. The investigation found no wrongdoing. Koch and Crawford were reinstated to their positions. You could find more on this story by visiting us online right now at SiouxLandProud.com or our new KCAU 9 mobile news app. 43 Iowa counties are declining some or all of their COVID-19 vaccine allocations for next week. Governor Kim Reynolds says the Johnson & Johnson vaccine pause could be making some people reconsider getting the shot, leaving unused doses at local health departments. Vaccine supply that's been declining is being reallocated to more populous counties now. Still, vaccine hesitancy is being seen nationwide, and Governor Reynolds says the state of Iowa is prepared to address it. We need to really do a deep dive and take a look at why, what's behind it, what can we do to help ensure um, Iowans that this is this, they are safe and this is the right thing to do, especially as we work to open back up and just continue to get life back to normal. Today, more than 37% of Iowans have been fully vaccinated, ranking Iowa 15th in the country for vaccine administration. Downtown Sioux City is starting to gain more retail businesses. Some good news there, as renovations of older properties are becoming more frequent in the downtown area. So is the attraction to have a business there. Emily Vollmer, owner of Rooted Boutique in Holstein, says she's deciding to add a second location of her store right in Sioux City. Her second boutique is set to open this summer. We're also learning in the works a potential future grocery store. Hundreds of people from all over the Midwest came to Sioux City this week to participate in the eight ball tournament. The championship starts today in the Sioux City Convention Center. Participants are competing for a $75,000 prize. 
There are 120 tables players are competing on, and they must be at least 21 years of age to participate. I've been competing in quite a bit of them. They're fun. You get to meet people from all across the Midwest. You get to meet new people. Um, you get to meet people that are coming in from out of state. I mean, it's a good time. The final day of competition is set for this Sunday, April 25th. The wedding industry is a billion dollar industry, but I think first we're going to weather. So Marcus, I will go to you first. Thanks, Sophie. Temperatures outside today, definitely on the cooler side here throughout Siouxland. Again, around 15 to 20 degrees below normal for uh, compared to where we should be this time of year. Looking at our high temperatures today, warming up to 46 degrees here in Sioux City, as well as Lamar's 45 in Cherokee, 43 in Storm Lake. Wayne and Yankton at 47 degrees and Norfolk at 48 today. Forecast low temperatures overnight tonight. They'll drop down below freezing into the upper 20s again. So expect those uh, freezing temperatures tonight. It looks like tomorrow we'll see some warmer temperatures, but we'll also see a chance of rain during the evening. I'll have more details on that in the 9 on 9 forecast. Sophie. All right, thanks, Marcus. Now on to that story. The wedding industry is a billion-dollar industry, like many that took a financial hit last year. Some Siouxland venues tell us they lost more than $100,000 in revenue in 2020 alone after having to be closed for several months. The general manager for the Sioux City Convention Center says it has been a challenge trying to project business for 2021, but he says he's hopeful. We brand new. Uh, we just started last year with the COVID kind of, you know, have to stop everything just like everyone else. So I think that's one of the things is for us. It's pretty hard to gauge, but at the same time, we can see that it's going to come back strong. Tonight at 6, KCAU 9's Lydia Vasquez explains what Siouxland wedding venues are projecting for this year and for next. A garage in Sheldon is a total loss tonight after a fire last night. That fire broke out just before 5 p.m. Tuesday at 2980 Oak Hill Avenue. Sheldon firefighters found the garage engulfed in flames. The fire also caused some damage to the siding and windows of the house at that address. Siouxlanders, the Iowa Department of Transportation, or DOT, is asking for your input tonight regarding a proposed replacement of the Gordon Drive Viaduct and Bacon Creek Conduit in Sioux City. The DOT will hold two meetings on its website to gather some input. The first would be live on April 27th at 5.30 p.m. There will also be a presentation and a Q&A session. Now, the second one will be a self-guided tour of the project. Afterwards, people can submit their comments and also their questions. We have some bad news for your wallet. Popular household items could be seeing a price hike. Companies like Procter & Gamble are expected to raise their prices by up to 9% for products like laundry detergent and toilet paper. This, of course, follows another price increase from a rival company that produces Huggies diapers and Scott paper products. Executives say that the hike could be due to demand issues and also staff shortages. What's happening is you have pent-up demand due to COVID, and that's being combined with you don't have all workers back to work. So that's creating a classic supply-demand imbalance. Another factor in all this, rising transportation costs. Gas prices now approaching $3 a gallon nationwide. Well, the Oscars will be held this weekend, and tonight all eyes are on the best actor category. Why industry pros are betting on a posthumous win coming up. And it is looking like we might see some rain tomorrow night. We'll have a nice weekend with a warm-up. And next week, those 70s return. Details on all of that after the break. You're watching KCAU 9 News with Sophie Erber and meteorologist Marcus Beasley. This is KCAU 9 News at 5. Thanks for sticking with us. One of those days where, yes, it's chilly, and yes, it's probably below average. Correct me mm -hmm. if I'm wrong, no. but at least we have some beautiful blue yep. skies and uh, some sunshine on us tonight. Some sunshine, and we've actually seen those clouds break apart a bit more this afternoon, allowing for that sun to continue to shine. We had some off and on sunshine earlier today as we had clouds a little bit more thick, but now we're seeing those clouds move out and plenty of sunshine here this afternoon here throughout Sioux City. The view from the Ho-Chunk Center showing a sunny downtown Sioux City. And we're going to continue to see that sunshine, but it does not feel nearly as nice outside as it looks here. Temperatures are chilly in the 40s here throughout Sioux. The lower 60s, Saturday looks a little cooler in the 50s, and then rebounding quickly Sunday into the upper 60s. 
mid to upper 70s on Monday, Tuesday, lower 70s. So some warmer temperatures are in the forecast for the start of next work week. Overnight tonight, 27 degrees for your low temperatures. So we will drop down below freezing 58 degrees tomorrow which is going to feel pretty nice here compared to what we've seen really throughout the last few days. Your 909 forecast showing a high temperature of 61 Friday, 57 Saturday, 69 Sunday. So a really big temperature increase from Saturday to Sunday. Monday, another big temperature increase right around 80 degrees or so. And then the rest of next week looks a bit cooler in the 60s and 70s and a chance that some showers, maybe a few thunderstorms there on Tuesday. And this is an interesting picture right here <laughs> sent in of some tulips with snow around them. You kind of get a mixing of the seasons that we had this morning in Siouxland of spring and winter. A very confused photo, but a oh, beautiful yeah. one at that. Mm -hmm. Thanks a lot for that, Marcus. Well, Art Splash will have a venue in Sioux City this year. The festival is a fundraiser and a combo for the popular uh, among art enthusiasts. Also provides some live music. The Sioux City Art Center says this year's event will be held right in downtown Sioux City. In recent years, it has taken place at Riverside Park. If you'd like to see how Siouxlanders are reacting to the changes here, you can visit our digital exclusive story posted online right now at SiouxlandProud.com or our free mobile news app. The Dark Knight has returned, but he's not fighting crime in the streets of Gotham. Why his new mission is helping out animals. That story is coming up, but first, before his death, Chadwick Boseman racked up several iconic performances. The Oscar is giving him a posthumous nod now, but could he win on the big night? We'll take a look next. And stories Thursdays on KCAU 9 News. The 93rd Academy Awards just days away now, and one of the most talked about categories is Best Actor. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez reports on why the late Chadwick Boseman is expected to join a short list of performers who win this award posthumously. Hollywood's biggest night always promises some surprises. And the Oscar goes to... But this year, experts say one of the top categories might be more predictable than ever. One of the most foregone conclusions about what's going to happen is that Chadwick Boseman wins Best Actor. Chadwick Boseman, who died in August of colon cancer at the age of 43, posthumously was, nominated for his performance in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. I ain't like you, color. I got talent. His oh, first man. Oscars nod ever, despite some powerful... Past performances. Voters know and understand that this will be the last time they will be able to honor Chadwick. And I think that it's impossible to ignore the role that that plays into, into voting this season. Bozeman would be only the third actor to posthumously win an Oscar, Get following Peter hell. Finch. I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not gonna take this anymore! And Heath Ledger. <laughs> and while he is the favorite to win, he's up against other strong nominees and what's historically been an obstacle. He is the only nominee in his category from a film that's not nominated for Best Picture. Only three or four people have been able to win under those circumstances in history. But bolstering optimism, Bozeman already won at this year's Critics' Choice, SAG, and Golden Globe Awards, where his widow gave this emotional acceptance speech. He would say something beautiful, something inspiring. Bozeman's life and performances inspiring until the end. I would love to see him get up on stage and accept that award because um, he deserved it. Well, there are some lucky rescue animals out there who are getting a ride to their new homes thanks to Batman. What keeps this rescue crusader hitting the road each day? Next. It's not just fighting crime that's keeping the caped crusader busy these days. Uh, real life Batman has been putting a lot of miles on the old Batmobile and his mission has been taking him far beyond Gotham City. ABC's Will Gans has the story. These days, Batman is more paw than pow, and he's branching out of Gotham to help rescue and transport animals in need. Batman and Robin here. Chris Van Dorn is the man behind the mask. It's not every day that you get to reveal the identity of the Batman. That is true. I don't normally do, you know, uh, you know, face revealing interviews. <laughs> Chris is also the man behind Batman for Paws, a nonprofit based in Orlando. Why the Caped Crusader? Not only did he look super cool, um, he didn't really have any superpowers, you know. 
Um, he was just a guy, uh, you know, trying to make a difference in the world. Chris getting the custom suit and a Robin costume for his own rescue pup, Mr. Boots. Hitting the road in a slightly modified Batmobile to transport pups to no-kill shelters and sometimes to their forever homes. Just before this interview, Chris wrapped an 18-hour round trip to North Carolina to reunite this pit mix with his mama. You could see that the dog was excited to see his mom. You know, like, you could tell he remembered and knew he was finally back home. And that makes, it, that's priceless. That is priceless. So that makes it all worth it to me. Chris has driven dogs and cats and even rescue rats from Florida to Colorado and Vermont and just about everywhere in between. Chris using his days off from his job as an audio engineer to make the long trips. I try to, you know, rescue as many animals as I can um, when I have the time, and it's very gratifying. And then fighting crime at night, is that? <laughs> exactly. Busy guy taking a live look outside right now. Marcus returns with one more check on your forecast. First, this look at sunny downtown Sioux City. And before we wrap up at 5, let's check in first with Tim for what's coming up at 6. Hi, Tim. Hey, good afternoon, Sophie. As you mentioned a bit earlier, Governor Reynolds is back out speaking to Iowans today. She has some concerns over the number of folks in the state that have gotten their COVID vaccine. Governor Reynolds now appealing to all Iowans uh, who have not gotten the vaccine and who may be a bit hesitant to receive their COVID-19 vaccine. What she says uh, could be causing the concerns and how the state hopes to encourage Iowans to get one of those shots. We'll take a closer look at that all coming up here at 6 o'clock after World News Tonight. Elsewhere, a jury has ruled in favor of two Denison City employees who sued the former mayor and city council member there. City clerk Lisa Cook and city manager Terrence Crawford were awarded a total of $376,500 in damages. And the sun was out just long enough today for some baseball <laughs> players to take the field. Sophie, Jake has that in sports all at six. My favorite sport. Thanks a lot, Sam. And it is a beautiful night for baseball, mm -hmm. especially if you're moving and staying warm. That's right. <laughs> Still chilly out there, but plenty of clear skies here throughout Siouxland. Looks like we'll drop down to freezing tonight, but a little bit warmer tomorrow. All right. Thanks, Marcus. Thank you for joining us. We hope you'll join us again at six. Until then, have a great night, everyone.